So first rule, rule number one, be on time. Uh, preferably half an hour before the presentation. And in the ideal world, previous day. Go to the place where you're supposed to give a presentation, check all the technical devices, does it work? Do you have this click or the other one? Do you have mic? Do you have this mic or that mic or it's without mic? So you should have a really, really loud voice. Check how do you feel? Because presentation is also about how you feel. If you feel confident, presentation will be okay. If you hate presentations or if you don't like the subject you are talking about, it will be a disaster. So the rule number one, be on time. So the, the name of the presentation today is how to dazzle with your speech. So it's not only about uh, how to convince people, how to get them follow your ideas, but how to dazzle, how to be brilliant. And it's very important. Because presentation, good presentation, it's not only about the words, it's not only about the ideas. Actually, it's about you. So this will be the focus of today's presentation, how you can get most of you. Uh, I think it's very, very important, and I really like this idea that this, uh, this meeting today we have on the March 8th. Do you have your own formula? What does March 8th means to you? Maybe some ideas. Do you like flowers? Yes. How many of you receive flowers today? All of, All of us. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I think that March 8th, um, it has a very ambiguous meaning. And uh, not everybody of us have the common understanding what does it mean. But for me, March 8th means that, uh, and I really like this book by Virginia Woolf, Mrs. Dalloway. I don't know how many of you have read it. But she's one of the feminist writers, uh, British writers, who has been born uh, 100 plus years ago. And she has this book, uh, Mrs. Dalloway, and she said, and, and the book starts with the words that Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself. And I think these are very powerful wo words, especially for women, because, of course, we like that other people praise us, that they say how great we are. But if we don't love ourselves, if we are not strong enough, to give and to buy flowers myself, then we cannot expect that others would. So first of all, be confident about yourself. And if sh shit happens, <laughs> just buy the flowers yourself. This is very important. Uh, I don't know how many of you have read this book or, or, or you've seen the TED Talks uh, by Niger Nigerian author Chimananda Ngoji Adichi, impossible to, pro to pronounce it, she had a book, uh, We Should All Be Feminists. Maybe you know this better. It was, uh, by, it was made by Gucci a couple of years ago. This t-shirt cost, I think, 700 euros. You could get it and you could claim that you could be the feminist. And, uh, and I think these were very powerful uh, words because at some point, this feminism idea become, um, um, become infotainment accepted. For me, 8th of March, I think for me, the meaning is the following. In the beginning, these were the, uh, this, this was a struggle for human rights. Women, we have human rights like uh, voting, participation in public life, working, etc., etc. Then I think it uh, transformed into the fight or the struggle for, or for equal rights and against discrimination. And I think at the moment, what we, uh, what we, how I feel about the 8th of March, it's about empowerment about giving women more power. Uh, about myself, uh, I don't know how many of you know me. I know Yulia, I know, <laughs> yeah, Yulia is here. I know many others of you. But uh, about myself, uh, I've been, uh, I love stage. But I didn't love stage when I was six years old. Why? Because uh, I had this um, problem with my, I don't know, with my voice, with my, um, with my, the way how I, I couldn't, I couldn't pronounce the words. In English, there's this name. <laughs> yes, I cannot even pronounce it, you know, because I hate this word so much. And I remember myself, I'm a small girl sitting in the classroom, and um, I realized that I really have all these ideas, great ideas, one you know, share with people, but I'm so much afraid 
that I will I will not be able to pronounce this or that word. So probably the guys are and and the the, the, the my classmates would start laughing on me that I um, I just was afraid so much I didn't speak up. And the next memory I remember is after two years I'm in uh, Bauska. I'm from Bauska. I'm in Bauska. Um, some uh, competition where I had to. Uh, um, what it's called in English? Declamation, Spultinch, Declamation, Olympiad, the place where I had to, uh, to tell the poem. I was on this big stage. So probably something happened in my mind when I was a small girl to realize if I will not speak up, if I will not share my ideas in public, probably I would stay there behind the classroom afraid of everything, also myself. So I think for me, this was a, start, uh, a, a turning point. Uh, when I was 22, I became the, prime, uh, the, the press secretary of the, of, the, of the foreign minister. After that, I, I, I've been working in, in the bank. I was working for seven, eight years in, in Nordea Bank, leading the communications in, in, uh, in, in, in the Baltics and Poland. At the moment, I have my own uh, PR communications agency. So I've, I've been training people, starting from politicians to businessmen and, uh, and NGO activists. So I really understand that uh, public speaking is super, super empowerment for us. And it's especially super empowerment for us women, because we still see there's so much room uh, we, where we could develop. And for me, the turning point was uh, when I, with my colleagues, we established movement Oratore, especially targeted or thinking about women that we want to empower. And why? Because I, I realized that I don't want to be that zzz bitch. <laughs> who all the time um, tweets about, I hate all my panels, you know, so many guys on, on TV, why in the conference there are no female speakers, why I go to the boardrooms and there's only, only guys. So I thought, I don't want to be this negative, uh, negative person, I want to talk about these things in a positive manner. And we women should be responsible for that as well. We should be the ones who should take this power ourselves. So if we have ideas, if we have some really great ideas we want to share uh, others and empower us and also others, we have to stand up and be on stage. So that's why we established this community called Oratore, where we train everybody, not only women, but also men, how to be, a better, how to be better speakers. Because I understand, and me working in public relations and communications for, for 20 years, I understand that this moment when you step on the stage, it's not only for your reputation, because if you're in invisible, there's no reputation about you, right? So this could be, on one hand, very powerful internal leadership uh, development moment, and also uh, a great, uh, great uh, um, way or instrument if you want to promote yourself in your career path, and uh, maybe there you have some other agendas. So it's a very, very transformative leadership uh, uh, instrument. But about today, now today I would like to share some tips and tricks. I hope they will in empower you to find the best in your leadership, in your personality, and that it, it will help you next time when people ask you, can you share your ideas on stage? That you would realize, yes, I want to do it, because I see it's a great my own uh, leadership development path. But. Um, please be careful that this lecture alone probably would not help anything. It's like about swimming. You can, you can read hundreds of books about swimming, but if you, do, if you do not jump into the water, nothing would happen. So I would really encourage you, and for, for me, the KPIs after this presentation would be, if Yulia, for example, after one week would wrote me that, uh, that you know, there are some people in our team who said, yes, I want to I, I, I wanna share this idea with you. So first of all, I will share with you some tips and tricks from my own experience, how to overcome, the, overcome a fear, how to get most of you. Uh, I will share you some very practical tips, maybe so, some self-coaching for you, because what's really important is that it all starts here, and it all starts here. Without that, you cannot be a good speaker. You can force yourself, but it would be a great disaster for you. Maybe you would vomit after every presentation, and I know people who does that. So you have to find this inner strength, this inner positive adrenaline, adrenaline, how to get most of it. 
Self-coaching, I would ask you some self-reflections. Uh, it's good if you have some notes you can take uh, just to lead you through this, what's happening here in your mind and in your here. Questions and answers, if anything, just let me know. And, uh, and I would be happy to answer them. And of course, I will have a homework for you. So you could say yes to, for the next step, stage you are invited to be on stage. Do you all agree? Yes. Any questions? How much time do we have? 45. 45 minutes, OK. So first, tips and tricks. So let's go to the very practical things. So the first, about fear. How many of you have a fear you know, uh, while you are, before you are presenting? OK. Roughly 80%. Statistics shows it's 70% people who say that they're afraid from, from, from public speaking. Uh, and it has a special, even, it has a special uh, name. It's not a disease, but it's a mental state. It's called glossophobia. So if you Google, you can Google. There are hundreds of articles, hundreds of research. And it says that, uh, yes, that's true. People are afraid to be on stage. And, and, and that's OK. For me, it's a very calming uh, feeling that I'm not alone. So you see already here, you know, around how many of you actually, so you share the same boat. So, so, so for me, it's very calming when I understand that I'm, I'm not alone. What's very important is that um, it's very important to understand that it's OK to be afraid. What happens, uh, there's this uh, thing of, uh, uh, what was the English word? Um, uh, flight or fl fight or fleet. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. There's some, um, there's some um, explanations that it comes from tribal time. There's something really bad happened. You had to stand up and, uh, and to, 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 deliver, to deliver the message to the, to, to, to the crowd, to the tribe. And the moment was the following. If they say, OK, I support you, you are alive. If not, they would kill you. So there, there comes something from the ancient times that once you are in front of the stage, you don't know. Do you have to fight? Or do you have to flee uh, to, to, to get rid of the situation? So what happens is that uh, mentally, physically, all our body reacts to that. Probably you have, uh, you have noticed this feeling of, you know, my, my, heads are, no, my, my legs are trembling. I cannot breathe, you know, I have blackout and I don't I, I want to kill myself because this is the worst thing what could happen. So if you understand that, it's easier to overcome. And the way for me personally, how I overcome this is by thinking that I want to I want to make it turn it into positive adrenaline. Like sportsmen. If you think, just think, just imagine how a sports, sportsman or sportswoman might feel uh, a sprinter be before 100 meters sprint. Is it fear? Is it adrenaline? Is it uh, excitement? What is it? Determination. Determination? Passion? Focus? In any case, this idea of positive adrenaline is something that, at least for me, it works. Um, these tips and tricks is that, um, for me, it's very important, and I hope for you as well, is to understand I'm not alone. Everybody has fear. I've been working with journalists a lot. And some of my friends who are, who are TV broadcasters, they say, sometimes it happens that before the TV show, I don't feel anything. I don't have fear, I don't have passion, I don't have positive adrenaline, no, nothing. And then they say, this is the worst thing what can happen to me. So embrace this feeling to have fear, to have emotions, to have positive adrenaline. And say that it's not about fear. This is what mobilizes me, this is what makes me focus. So take it, embrace it, and just transform this narrative in your own way in a positive story uh, telling. What also helps me is um, mm, just before the presentations, it's to, to involve my body. Body is an instrument in our 
um, for our personalities. So just before the presentations, you can use a power gesture like this. Oh. Can you all stand up? Yeah. And just imagine how would be the best yourself if you want to present something on a stage here. Just look. So what we see, shoulders back, yeah. chest forward, you know. <laughs> it feels a little different, right? Uh, feet hip width apart, you know, a bit like this. Not like maybe like this, you know, but a bit like this. Uh, feel the ground, you know. Okay, I'm here, I'm now, you know, this is my momentum. And uh, inhale, and exhale, exhale. <laughs> How does it feel? Do you feel power? And then there's this power gesture, like Wonder Woman uh, posture. Or Wonder Man as well, it could be, you know, if you like it. Stand like this, you know. Yes, I can make it, I can do it. Yes. I can make it, I can do it. Okay, big applause to everybody, you know. Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen this uh, TED talk about fake it till you make it. How body really helps you to become your, your best self. About this power posture, okay, maybe if you have to present, you know, of course I can start like this, but maybe it's too funny, but you can do it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a restroom or just before, or in the morning, you know. Just, um, just be brave, you know. Use your, use your body, use your gestures. The worst thing what would happen is that if you would start presenting like this, and it's not only that people understand and they see that, you know, there's something wrong with you, I really see that you don't want to be here, you know. You are, you are afraid, but it also doesn't help you to do, deliver the message, you know. Where are my postures? Where's my gestures? Very, very difficult to be closed. So body is very, very important. But the same as body is, is what's happening here. Uh, and it's not like all this spiritual uh, world's uh, bullshit, but it's about how we really as human beings work. So, positive imagination. Think about how great it would be to be on stage. People would love you when you are on stage, and they love you already because they invited you to, if people, if you are invited to be on stage, this is already a sign. They wanna hear what you are talking about. So, Think about what would be this perfect feeling. You're on a stage, you know, you love it so much. And, uh, and after presentations, people would ask you the questions uh, and you would feel, feel so powerful. Think about this, uh, visualize. What would be the perfect, what would be the perfect uh, yours presentation? Think about the positive Don't, and, and, and delete the negative. Any questions? It's only the first uh, lesson learned, my own experience. The second, uh, imposter syndrome. Have you ever heard about this? Yes. Yeah. Can you explain a bit, like, in one word? I don't belong here. I don't belong? Okay, yes. They will find out that I'm not one of them. I'm the liar, you know? <laughs> yes. Perfect, very good answer. When I was uh, this uh, autumn, in, uh, in, um, in September, I was in London, I participated in a Financial Times uh, Life's, um, Lifestyle Festival, and there, ha there, we had a, there were a lot of uh, TV journalists as well. And there was a discussion with the BBC broadcaster, and she said, you know, I'm meeting every day, and, it's, and it's, also, it's not only about uh, uh, women, it's also about men, and she said, I meet every day with all these powerful people, people you know, great business uh, uh, women, great businessmen, uh, scientists, uh, researchers, Nobel Prize winners, and she says, and before the interviews, many of them say, oh my God, maybe, you know, 
Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe you have to invite other person. You know, maybe if somebody, I will have done, uh, I will have uh, you know, questions from the audience. I would not know the answer. You know, maybe you could call my colleague. You know, maybe she knows better. No, I don't know. Maybe I, you know, I hadn't been here. <laughs> Imposter syndrome, especially for those people who are professionals, so, uh, who who are who have achieved something in, in their life. Uh, they have this feeling. You know, maybe maybe I have not deserved this. Maybe this is something, some place I do not uh, deser deserve to be because it's just, you know, it's just luck or, you know, I don't know, it just happened. I don't know why and how. And these internal negative dialogues are killing us. So, and again, it's very important to recognize them. Yes, they are here. Perfect. I'm the one, you know, who is a perfectionist. You know, I'm the one who wants to get most of everything. But uh, this is not the way it work. It would work. So stop your negative internal dialogues. And for me, uh, for me, uh, especially when I started this oratory movement, for me, um, I started actually I started uh, noticing myself. For example, when people ask me to present something, what happens in my mind? You know, I receive a call, and okay, do you want to talk about this or that? Maybe I don't know this topic. Maybe you know. Maybe there's some other people. To once you recognize, why not me? Stop it. It's not the way it would work. So um, if you have time, maybe not today, but try to understand what happens in your mind when you are invited next time to speak, present, um, show something to your colleagues. And stop these negative dialogues because they are killing our energy. Other thing, next time when you are asked to uh, present something and you say, oh, and you have all these plenty of excuses, I don't have time, I'm not the best, you know, I don't have, you know, time to prepare a presentation, maybe this is not my topic, maybe, maybe some other colleague can do that. Understand what could be your excuse, uh, understand which, what actually are these excuses, why? For example, I don't know, do you have some excuses when people ask you to present? Like... For example, too busy. too busy. Okay, too busy. The most popular, probably, and easy to, you know, just to say I'm too busy. Of course, we have been too busy. Enough. I don't know enough. Perfect imposter syndrome, yeah. What else? Her day. day, yeah. So recognize all these excuses and think why you are doing this. And there's this game we can play. Uh, say yes to every, let's say, Next month, we everybody play the game. Say yes to next uh, invitation for public speaking. Just exclude these imposter syndrome negative dialogues, you know? Just play the game. Life is too short to be too serious, right? So just uh, don't make it too, too serious. And of course, and, and I think this is the most powerful tip and trick, get a mentor. And think, do you have some colleagues, your boss, friends maybe, Husband, wife, not really. Uh, who could help you to overcome these fears and to, uh, to help you to, uh, to prepare for a presentation? Can you, do you, can you think about one person who could help you? Please raise your hand who, who, who knows a person who, uh, who could help you. So, very good, half of you, perfect. Next time you are invited, just uh, ask them to help you to convince you to talk about the topic, maybe to practice. It's very, it's okay to practice in front of the mirror, we can all do, but sometimes it's easier, you know, to get the confidence from the person who you trust. And do not stay alone. Ask for help, especially if you know why you are doing this, why you want to present. It's about you, your understanding about yourself, your leadership, but also about others. If you know this, if you're passionate about this, just go for it. The third, very, very important, get rid of your ego. Because ego, this is what kills us, why we are not presenting. It's not about, I'm, I'm thinking about others. I'm thinking about me, 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 I fear, look what I do. It's me. Don't think about yourself. Think about the audience, think about others. And for me, this is a transformative idea of uh, uh, how to overcome fear and how to be, be a brilliant speaker. Don't think so much about you. 
Think about audience. What you can do? You can, uh, the first thing is when you, when you put away focus from you to the audience, it helps you to overcome perfection. And I think that perfection is a disease of the 21st century, especially for women, for men as well, but for women very much. We don't do so many things because we think we should do more, 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 better, better, better. Maybe there's some other way. At the moment, I'm reading the book of uh, Pareto Principle. I don't know how many of you are aware of that 80-20 idea. It's super, super transformative. There's also other book which I, re which I recommend to you uh, called Good Enough for Bastards. And this is what I try to remember, not only on my working day, every day's life, but also when I'm delivering the speech, just make it good enough. Because nobody knows these 20, other, I know, 10% actually which are stopping you from presenting because you are too self-doubt about yourself. So make it good enough. And you don't have to be Michelle Obama, you know, when you are. Just make it good enough, you know. Just be on stage and talk. Just be on stage and present. And if, even if you are, you know, mumble, or maybe you don't know some things, or maybe presentation is not perfect. Okay, just, you know, practice makes perfect. Perceive it as an experiment, as a, you know, as an instrument for self-development. Uh, tip and trick about audience. Uh, think about, not yourself, but about audience. Who they will be? How old? Women, men, colleagues, uh, customers, clients. What, you want, what they want to hear from you. If possible, talk with them. What is that what you want to hear from me? I'm here for you, not for me. I'm here because of you. What are the questions you want to uh, hear? Uh, the answers to the questions. It helps a lot. Also, for example, when I'm doing a public, uh, uh, some presentation, a big stage for the people I don't know, sometimes if I, uh, I'm, if I am on time, I also, you know, just walk around and talk to people. What is this what you expect, you know? Or I just, okay, my name is Dagny. What, what's your, why you are here? What's your, no? It also makes you very, com much, 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 uh, uh, much, much comfortable if you know somebody from the audience. And uh, be present. Show that you are here. Uh, switch off all your mobile devices. Be on time. Uh, it also has very big uh, psychological effect. If you are the first one in the room and you are the one who is greeting people, so they see that you are already there, it makes you in this position of, uh, let's say, Host, it's a, it's a very powerful position, you know? You are the one who is actually orchestrating this, uh, this, 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 this thing. So be present, be on time, show that you are here. You know everything about technical devices? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. You know whom to ask uh, uh, for help? You maybe have some friends in the room, you know, you could just make eye contact and you have some supporters already. So be present, be focused, switch off your phone, of course, don't check your WhatsApp messages or messenger and, uh, and, uh, and enjoy. The fourth, practice, practice, practice. I already said about the swimming. You cannot uh, learn swimming if you're not jumping in this water. The same about public speaking, the same about the presentation. Actually, just for the, uh, this, actually these pictures are from the Digital Freedom Festival. I am uh, with my team, we are organizing for five, five years already in, in Latvia. And actually here I'm, I'm, I'm presenting a hoodie to, to the Lat to Latvian president. And I've never heard, I have never seen that he's wearing it, you know, <laughs> but at least it was a very good uh, uh, photo momentum. But, um, and this is a stage in Rigs Latvijas Biedrības Nams with uh, how many people? 500, 600? How many? 1,000. 1, okay, 1,500. So, how many of you have been uh, uh, presenting on like stage? I don't know, 1,000 people. Okay, we have one. Um, 800? Okay, 500? Mm -hmm. 800, 500, six, uh, 400, 1, 50, mm -hmm. 10, 5. 
Perfect. So we have the whole range. What is very important that, um, and it's interesting. On the one hand, it even doesn't matter, ma ma matter whether it's 20 people or it's uh, 1,000. Of course, if you are prepared. Sometimes they say that uh, for 20 people, it's even more difficult. Mm, my, for myself, uh, my observation is that for me, uh, everything is easy if I have prepared for the presentation. And there are formulas which says that, for me, the formula is one minute presentation demands one hour preparation. Super simple present, uh, formula. So if it's 20 minutes presentation, to make it perfect, plan 20 hours of preparation. By preparation, what do we mean? What, what, what could be the expressions of preparation? Maybe you have some ideas. Like, what does preparation mean? Research. Preparation of presentation itself. Yeah, like, uh, like, I don't know, PowerPoint presentation and visuals. Questions. Yeah, questions, what to ask. Going to the presentation yes. Uh, what, you, what you mean, go through the presentation yourself? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. This is very powerful. For me, it's very important to practice it beforehand. I can do it in front of the mirror. If I have a mentor, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can go through with a mentor. Mentor. So it's a, it's a, it's a very simple formula. So what we can practice, and it's very important. The presentation. It, it's not only the. As I said in the more in, in the very beginning, it's not only about the structure, about the words. So of course, it's content. It's messages. You know what you want to deliver. For me, when I think about the presentation, I always think, what is this one thing I want people to remember? Or what could be the, um, uh, the uh, highlighted three messages I want people to remember? So content is very important, but it's not all. Second is uh, format, presentation techniques. But presentation techniques, uh, it's a different uh, ways of, I know. Do I use PowerPoint presentation? Do I use, I don't know, Prezi presentation? Do I use just, uh, just pictures or bullet points? Or, or, or maybe it's, um, it's just me without any presentation? Maybe I read it down? Maybe, you know, there are so many different techniques. Maybe I involve people. Maybe, maybe I use a flip chart, just flip chart, ask all the questions in the beginning, and then just, you know, answer them while presenting. Many different techniques. You can Google and there are hundreds. What's the most important thing is for you to understand what works the best for you. How many of you use PowerPoint presentations while you're presenting? Okay, most of you. Uh, there's this uh, joke, uh, if you don't have a point, use PowerPoint. <laughs> I'm using the PowerPoint as well. Uh, why? Because of course it's, some, it's something visual. We can use it, uh, use it and it uh, helps our, to present our message. Uh, here I would say I have already too many uh, letters. But of course, don't put too much content or too much uh, on your PowerPoint presentation. And of course, you as a personality, you as a speaker, this is something that you can control. You can practice and you can get uh, most of it. And you, your personality, when I talk about your personality as a speaker, here I mean how you can present that you know the topic, that you're a charismatic person, that you have a confidence, and there's worse listening into you. When I think about the presentations, I also think about how many people are in the room, how much time they spend, and actually how much actually it costs the company that you are here, right? <laughs> so if you are here 50 people, 50 people, one hour, just think it's one person who is uh, the full week, working week of, uh, of like, actually, this is the company is sponsoring your presence here. Why I'm telling the, this? Because it's a very huge responsibility for me as a presenter uh, to give the value for this time that you are here. And it keeps me focused on um, how can I, in a shortest time, in a most efficient way, deliver the message that would help my audience. 
I don't have the uh, answer for the best length of the presentation. I don't know how many of you are watching these TED, uh, TED presentations, and it's 18 minutes maximum. Probably you've seen the perfect presentations in three, okay, four minutes, five, ten. Uh, and then you see how actually how much you can tell in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in 18 minutes, how much actually you can deliver in, 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 in 15 minutes. So you can, uh, you can, you can uh, digest your message. And actually I would say that make it as simple as possible. And, uh, and, uh, and this is what you can practice. And of course, the, the last but not least, practice like actors, because this is your show. This is your show time. Uh, uh, I have one friend who is working in the theater, and she's training the actors. And she says that it's interesting, and why actors so much uh, rehearse their shows, uh, their plays, is that because our body has um, memory. So if we practice presentation, if we talk in loud, if something would happen, I would have, you know, blackout, my body somehow would, you know, lead me through. So that's why we need to practice. That's why we, we need to use our visual uh, imagination, positive thinking. This is, this is our show time, and we have to show best of ourselves. And uh, let's, let's, let's take it as a great um, challenge of uh, positive adrenaline. Next thing, uh, inhale deeply and take a breath. Actually, this is, I would say, if I would have to nail down only one thing, one, only, only one tip and trick, this would be my number one. Breathe. Do you uh, breathe now? <laughs> so, tips and tricks uh, that before the presentation, as I said, be on time. Uh, one is preferably uh, half an hour or one hour before, even the next day, just to just to be, you know, to check the room. Of course, with all the devices, be alone. For me, the trick is very important. I have to be alone before the presentation. Ten minutes, fifteen minutes, just to focus, just to concentrate. We are living in such a distracted world, you know. There's such big noise. Just try to focus. And in ideal world, I have uh, one hour before I'm alone, all my devices are switched off. I'm, I'm, uh, I try to meditate, I'm not very good on that, but I try to uh, breathe. Breathe or breath? Breathe. breathe. And breath is breath, breathe is breathe. So, just try to breathe. Do you know how to breathe? <coughs> Anybody of you? Okay, can you, can you, can you explain? Yes. <laughs> okay, and how you do it? Like how, where? Oh, I start in the stomach. Start in the stomach, yeah. So this deep, you know. And the exhale should be longer than the exhale. Yeah. C can you can you show us? Hardly. <laughs> <laughs> no, just come on and show us. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> You're playing the game. Say yes. It's just a game, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Show so. <laughs> yeah. So we stand, yeah. Okay, as far as I remember, uh, when you need to calm down, and uh, I suppose now I really want to calm down. <laughs> yes, perfect moment. <laughs> yeah, uh, you need to inhale and exhale approximately three times longer. So it's uh, one not so deep breath, and then long, calm exhale. And then after three or four times, you will be calmer. Yeah. Perfect, super, thank you. Perfect presentation. So, so can you close eyes, all of you? And just try to make the best inhale. In and out. Simple, right? <laughs> and let's try to do it five times. Your own pace, you know. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Uh, 
remember, uh, fake it till you make it. So when you're on stage, so before, during presentation, after. So before to stay calm, the best thing is uh, inhale, exhale. Uh, imagine that drop your brain into your stomach, yeah? But it's not like physically, but just imagine, you know, that uh, you just be present here, don't think about what's happening here, just I'm here, you know? It's my focus. Inhale and smile. Smile helps a lot, you know? Give inner smile to yourself, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm good enough, I'm brave, I have courage, you know, to be on stage. And, uh, and by your smile, you also show others that you are confident. People like passionate people, you know? They like that you share great ideas. And just smile, be positive. Can you smile? <laughs> so it helps, right? So inhale, exhale, smile, stay relaxed and, and focused. Drop your drain in your stomach. Whew, I'm here. This is my show time. Six, talk slowly, make pauses, break, let people to think. We, everybody, we talk faster than actually people understand. Um, when you are next making presentation, think about, can you make it slower? It's not, it's not only because for you it will be easier to remember what exactly would be the uh, ending of your sentence, because sometimes, you know, we, we might forget. But it also makes uh, other people uh, to think. And therefore, I think that one of the most important thing and most powerful techniques is, uh, what's the English word for pauses? You say like this, break. pause, break. break, break, pause, pause, pause. Make pause. These are so powerful instruments. And why? Make people think. And especially when you have some, something very important to deliver. Make pauses just to make people think. Because it's not only about me, it's also about you. Actually, it is about you, it's not about me. This is a super powerful instrument. So first of all, tip and trick, make yourself slow, slower than you think. Make pauses. So natural pause is uh, three four, uh, to five, let's say three, four times in a minute when we talk in a normal conditions. When we are presenting, you know, we want to hurry up so much because we want this to be over as, as soon as possible because we hate this, you know, I don't want to be here, you know, just make it through too fast. So, yeah, drink water. Look around. Make eye contact, you know, with people who are here because then they would feel engaged, special. Oh, you recognize me? Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm here too. Yeah, perfect. Just check, are they following you? Engage with them, ask questions. Uh, and make them think about what you've been talking about. This is a dialogue. This is a form of dialogue with the audience as well. And if I would uh, suggest you one thing, try to record your presentation. How many of you have uh, uh, seen yourself presenting on a stage? Awful, right? <laughs> Especially the voice. The first time I heard myself, oh my, oh my God, this is my voice? It's terrible, you know? What kind of English accent is it, you know? Some Baltic accent, I hate it. Um, uh, my tone of voice, oh my God. Uh, the speed. Who can follow my, my, my ideas because it's so fast? Get, but you have to love you, you know? So record your presentation. It could be very simple. Start with, uh, start with your phone and just record audio. For example, next time you have a, I don't know, meeting with a new colleague and you have to present all of you, you know, yourself and uh, like who you are. 
Make a 30 seconds elevator pitch who you are and record it and just uh, and just listen how does it sound It might feel very uh, like a stranger in the beginning but if you recognize that if you if you use it as a experiment to think what you can develop uh, better then it might be very very powerful for you to get your confidence And if, and of course this video is even next stage you know I don't have courage never, you know, to watch myself in my videos, but I will have, <laughs> I will have to do it next time. Maybe this time we'll make it, uh, we'll do it as well. So. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so always know the guy. I don't know, is he supposed to do that? Because, but he's my, uh, my, yeah, yeah, it's all this. Oh, perfect. So, be happy, high status, and be present. This happy status is super important. Actually, this presentation is also very much about this. Uh, if you don't want to be on stage, people know it. They can feel it. They don't trust you. So happy high status is your confidence, is the way how you present yourself, is the way how you feel. So there's, let's say, I would, I would be very maybe drastic, but I would say that there's no big, re there's, there's no big value for you to train uh, uh, best presentation skills or techniques if you are not confident yourself. So first of all, you have to start work with, with this and with this. So high status, people feel it, you know. You come. I love this topic, you know. Even if I'm late, you know, this is something that I'm really proud of. I want to empower you. I want to, you know, inspire you. I would be happy if after this presentation, you, know, you will, some of you will say yes to your next presentation. Uh, you have to be comfortable with uh, who you are. And as I said, perfection is a word we sh should delete from our vocabulary, from our, our mind. Uh, as I said, use visualization meditation to lift up your mood. This is very important. You have to be high status, but also high energy. And stand. This is your stage. Wherever, wherever you have a uh, moment you have to present yourself or your ideas, always stand. Because this is a super powerful uh, position. If you present something while you are sitting, you are losing 50% of your uh, impact. Always stand. And it's not only about the authority that you con uh, convey while you are standing and the focus you get. It's also about your body language. It's also the, the power what you can feel yourself. Always stand, because when we talk about, when we think about presentations, we also use the words effective presentations, persuasive presentations, presentations that you know people follow your idea of soft words. It's about impact and how to deliver the impact, not by sitting around the table, but by standing. So try. It's not very comfortable. Sometimes it's about stepping out of the comfort zone, but try to do it. Um, always know your first sentence and your last sentence. The same important as the first sentence is the last sentence. So sometimes it might happen, you know, I'm here and there's blackout. And sometimes we know this feeling, okay, I didn't know what to say or something, but somehow, you know, the, first, the beginning was disaster, but somehow it started and it just went with the flow. It was perfect. So practice your first sentence. It could be very simple, you know, hello, I'm very happy that we are here on the 8th of March. It's such a great day to talk about uh, public speaking as a leadership empowerment uh, instrument. Super, right? So now your first sentence. Very important, if it's possible, tell people what they will gain from the presentation, what's in it for them. Why they should be here listening to you. Uh, public speech, I like to think about public speech using the metaphor of the fish. Public speech should be like a fish with the beginning, body and ending, and in the ending, call to action opens the doors. The worst presentations are uh, where the last sentence is, okay, that's it. Okay, <laughs> why? So think about presentation as a, as, a, as, a, as a fish. It has a beginning, introduction, why you should be here, what you will learn during these 40 minutes, then it's body, you know, structure one, two, three. Uh, structure of three is a powerful structure. You can Google Steve Jobs uh, techniques uh, whatsoever, you know. And the tail. 
always think what other issues, what is the call to action of your presentation, and use it in the very end. So in my opinion, this is the best and the perfect um, uh, structure of the presentation. So you have to have a beginning, body, and ending, like a perfect essay, the same. The ninth, uh, ethos, logos, pathos. Who are aware of this? So ethos, pathos, logos, it comes from Aristotle's times. It's, uh, he wrote a book uh, called Rhetorics, where he, 2,000 years ago, already explained the power of uh, presentation. And he said that a good presentation consists of three elements. And therefore, I say, it's not only about the words, it's not only about the structure. So the presentation which convinces people consists of three elements. One is ethos, who I am. Me as a professional, as expert, as pe as person whom people trust, it's super important. So therefore, when you present yourself, it's very important that in the beginning already you tell the story of yourself so people uh, can decide, do they trust you or not? So this is very important. Say who you are, your professional credentials, your achievements, your authority. Second, logos. People like structure, uh, numbers, uh, uh, facts, arguments, this rational part, very important. And the last but not least, pathos. Uh, emotions, stories, uh, visuals, how you make them feel. So when you think about your next presentation, think about, does your presentation include all of this? That you are a trusted person, and how you can uh, uh, convince people that you are, that you, uh, in your presentation, it, 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 is rash, it has a lot of rational things, but also it has this um, uh, emotional part. Storytelling is one of the most uh, effective uh, techniques. If you want to be very good in presentations, presentations, uh, presentation skills, uh, use stories from your own personal experience. Use stories from the, your colleagues. Tell people stories. And the last but not least, uh, find your inner uh, high, high status, these strengths, rituals. Just think about presentation, it's your show. You are, in a way, an actor. An, an, an actor. Um, my rituals is I color my lips. Uh, I put on high heel shoes. For guys, it could be, you know, just a nice, uh, good looking. Uh, mm, mm? What is this? Bow tie. <laughs> Bow tie, you know? People see that you are prepared, you know, and it also it could help yourself as well. So I, I, I just talked with one uh, Russian uh, PR uh, advisor and he said, and we've had a talk about how it's important for your reputation building is also how you look, you know, your, your visual appearance. And uh, he used this word, which I really like, that words are promises, but your look is acknowledgement already, you know. Your dress, your style, your, uh, your attitude to yourself. If they feel that you are prepared, uh, it gives you a higher uh, status. And, uh, and it's also it's very important because it could also, it's like when you go to the ball and you find your dress, you find your, you know, you, you make your hair, the hairstyle and the makeup. It's part of the ritual to, make, to, feel, to feel good. I know some professional presenters, for example, women who always go to the professional makeup and, and they make uh, their hair very professionally because they say, this is my ritual. Because these two hours I use only, you know, to get myself confident. I like it because it, it, it also makes me think that this is my show time. And I want to get most of it. I, I want to enjoy it. As I said, uh, always remember about these power, uh, power postures, what happens in your mind. Positive visualizations, your body, power posture, and um, and what's very important, celebrate your courage. Maybe also in public, you know, post a Facebook uh, post or share this in your Instagram story, or you know, just uh, write an email to your friends. You know, this is a very important day for me. I did it. I like it. This is my this is my story. I enjoy it. 
So these were my 10 tips and tricks, or 10 tips and tips, tips, tips. If you wanna go deeper, these are some books what I rec recommend. This one, especially for, for girls, Anita Kron Trasted, she's Norwegian, and she, uh, she, she, at the moment she's Innovate Norway, uh, uh, head of Innovate Norway, but she was the first woman in, uh, in the Nordics, and she was leading HP for many years. Good not for bastards, perfect. The, the main idea is that, uh, that uh, you don't have to be, think about 80, 20, and just make it good enough. How to own, own the Room, it's a book by Viv Kroskop, who is a British uh, comedian, and she talks about the uh, high status, how to get the confidence. And she says that it's not only about the techniques, it's about actually how we feel. Talk like Ted, those who like Ted talks, Perfect book. You can uh, perfect, uh, perfect, uh, perfect for techniques. And the best thing is that you can practice it, or you can watch it, or you can actually you can read the book while watching different TED talks he's referring to. And and, and the last not but and the last but not least, just for the sake of celebration of today. So homework, very simple. So first of all, yes, say yes to your next presentation. How to do that, first thing, I think there's some homework you can do yourself. Just think about five topics you're passionate about. And you could uh, present to the bigger audience, your colleagues, your friends, your, I don't know, professional circles, uh, circles uh, some NGOs. Think, think about these five topics you are really uh, passionate about. I'm sure you would have them. Uh, write them down and uh, ask your colleagues, your boss, your friends, can you present them? Or we can look another way around sometimes and just be careful what you wish for. Even by the moment you're writing them down, maybe you're already sending the signal of, uh, if I be spiritual, I would say, uh, mm, to the cosmos, you know. And when this opportunity comes, say yes. And to be confident, just to uh, get the mentor who can help you. Just overcome your fears, so do, do never stay alone. So, when you are brave, uh, be on stage. You can also embrace others to be, uh, to be uh, brave. So this is my wish for, the, for, the, for today and for the other days. I hope that you have this uh, uh, feeling of say yes to your next presentation. So thank you very much for your 40 minutes, 45 minutes attention. If you have some questions, I'm here. And uh, thank you, thank you so much, and, uh, and, uh, and see you next uh, time on the, on, the, on the stage, on some of the stages. Thank you.